This is the National Report for Monday, September 13, 2021. In the headlines, close to 1,000 people were either vaccinated or tested in clinics held over the weekend. Details to this story and others after the break. With the news in detail, I am Leslie Ann Johnson. Close to 1,000 Grenadians were either vaccinated or tested as teams of volunteers working in partnership with the Ministry of Health staged clinics throughout the island over the weekend. Statistics show that 405 people were vaccinated and 410 were tested as part of a vaccination drive. Of that number, 142 were vaccinated on Saturday and 263 on Sunday while 70 people were tested on Saturday and 340 on Sunday. The drive, which involved doctors and nurses from the General Hospital, doctors from the St. George's University, members of the Cuban Brigade and Grenadian Volunteers, was the brainchild of Dr. Nilo Alvarez Toledo. Being the first of two no-movement weekends, the teams of medical professionals and other volunteers decided to take their services to the various communities to make testing and vaccination more accessible to the population. Director of Hospital Services, Dr. Carol McIntosh, who spearheaded the mobile team in St. David on Saturday, told the Government Information Service that education is essential to people making the best decision to protect themselves and their family. She says while they will visit new areas next weekend, the plan is to go back to the areas already visited to test and vaccinate those who are now ready. Those who came and had the test done, or had the vaccination done rather, vaccination done, and went back home and told them, yes, I had the vaccination, this is what happened, and these are the people that did it, that reinforced the trust and reinforced the, the lesson of fear. So they believe going back into that community where they may not have come out as they may have been reluctant in coming out, that they would be ready to come out again because they've known that this is a group that's come back again. And talking with people in the community, it's like, yes, you, you have to keep up with it. You have to keep up the constant so people understand this thing. Well, they're coming back. They were times with the same team, not only while they were sitting there, they heard that in another area there was a group that was waiting for the team to come, but the team may have had a lot people and couldn't move, they went, took their car, drove to the people, picked them up and brought them to the area and then drove them back. So they saw that people are making the effort. We had Nurse Lyons, I have to mention her specifically, and we had our left, Arlene Hardy, I have to mention her specifically, our team leaders that were working, and the minister, Minister Steele, Minister Thomas, and Minister Modest. They had community leaders that they brought out to assist us who were very open, who were saying, okay, we said, look, we need to do vaccinations. And they went and said, we're going to bring you here. In St. David, teams were in Latant, Pedmota, La Suggest, and the respective health centers. Services were also provided at the Rose Hill Community Center and at the St. John's Anglican School in Guave, as well as the Moban Health Center and on the Calivini Main Road and Victoria and Union in St. Mark. Dr. McIntosh applauded the work of nurses who have to go into remote communities to provide testing services to people, some of whom do not have the means to isolate if they begin exhibiting symptoms. These doctors, nurses, staff, everyday person, your everyday Grenadian, came out to help his or her fellow Grenadian work over 12 hours. And that doesn't negate, it actually made us and people in the community, the nurses that go out every day to do this, how much work it is, and really understand that we need to pull more and more people. Everyone. And people seeing that appreciate the fact that we went out. I have to tell you, I went up to places I didn't even know existed in Grenada. And wow. you walk up and up and up, and then you came to the house, and you're sitting there, and you start to understand the, the, the difficulty we, when you go into a house that is only two rooms and you have five people that are in that house and three are positive and we're telling them to isolate. It's like, what, what am I saying? To you? I have to sit down now and explain to you how you can isolate in this type of 
situation. So, and then when we do that, it was helpful because then people understand, well, you can't isolate per se, but you can also vaccinate. That will help to protect. We had one woman that came, and this was because this late on Sunday evening. She went to four houses, and we had eight people that came out on the side of the street to get vaccinated. We opened our car doors, had the roof up, used our cell phone lights, and did the vaccination. She says they have the support of more than 50 volunteers so far, with a list of others waiting to give off their service. Health teams will provide services in St. Andrew and other areas in the coming week. Grenadians in the diaspora will meet in a virtual information session on Tuesday to discuss how they can lend their support as the country continues to deal with the rising cases of COVID-19. Head of the local office of Diaspora Affairs, Derek James, says pledges have already been made by individuals and organizations in the diaspora and some of the donations are already on their way. Tuesday's meeting will discuss how further assistance can be provided, but in a structured manner. Tomorrow's meeting is to make an effort to let people know that the Office of the Diaspora Affairs here in Grenada is here to support them and to coordinate all the donations that will be sent to Grenada. Because we, don't, we just don't want everybody just buying anything that's not needed and shipping things that we don't know when it reaches, we don't know who it's going to and so on. So we want to make sure that we coordinate all the, 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 the donations and also to, uh, to tell the diaspora that there are point persons in the different uh, regions, point organizations in the regions that the donations should go through. So we have a, bit, a better coordination of it and we'll be able to monitor what's coming, where it's coming from, the value of it, so we could go back and say this is what came from the different regions and so on. When he had reached out to members of the diaspora in Canada, especially those in the Grenada Disaster Preparedness Committee in Toronto, hand sanitizers were purchased and shipped for busmen in Grenada. Subsequent requests were made to members of the diaspora in New York, Queens and elsewhere. I want to use the opportunity to say thanks to the members of the diaspora who came forward and requested that they, they, they get an opportunity to support. And I want to say the individuals and organizations who did that. And so the morals meeting is, is a cry to our nationals out there to help in this difficult time, because as you know, this thing is for all of us and also not just in terms of support but in material, but also in the area of calling family members here in Grenada and encourage them to, to take the vaccine and encourage them to follow the protocol that is given by the, the, the government. Tuesday's information session begins at 7 p.m. and will be on the Facebook page Grenadian Diaspora. This is the National Report. More news after the break. This is a message from the Ministry of Health. If you or a family member suspect that you may have contracted COVID-19 and are displaying symptoms, please immediately self-isolate at home. This means that you must also avoid all contact with other members of your household. Do not visit hospitals or health centers as this creates the potential for further spread of the virus and it puts additional persons at risk when you come into contact with them. Your best course of action is to call the COVID-19 hotline at 458-4787 or 538-4787 or contact your nearest health center or medical station. Once your information has been received, health officials will come to you. Help prevent the spread of COVID-19. This has been a message from the Ministry of Health. Continuing the news, vaccination and testing continues in Karakou this week. The COVID-19 response team for Karakou and Piti Martinique and the Ministry of Health say there will be a COVID-19 vaccination pop-up clinic for adults and children 12 years and over at the Hillsborough Tennis Court on Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. People have a choice of either the Pfizer or AstraZeneca vaccine. Parents are advised to accompany their children at the vaccination pop-up clinic and have a valid ID in their possession. Another vaccination pop-up clinic will be held at the Hillsborough Tennis Court on Thursday and in Piti Martinique on Friday. The impact of COVID-19 on the farming and fishing sectors were examined recently in a forum which discussed how the sectors can operate in the current environment. It was organized by the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Lands 
and looked at, among others, how farmers can organize themselves into groups, associations, and cooperatives to allow for more effective communication with the ministry. Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell said the meeting is a good way to support the government in coming up with measures to help develop the sectors. I welcome this opportunity to, 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 to get the response and, of course, the recommendation coming from this this, 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 what I call extremely important session here today. And I, I, I want to rest, I want you to rest assured, my colleague, brothers and sisters in the farming and fishing community, you can take it for me, and I'm sure the minister would reinforce that. Your recommendation, given what you are trying to do and we are trying to do together, will not be taken lightly. I do know that everyone knows that government is affected like anybody else, because that some of us who believe that the government has the resources to do everything. And I know the farmers understand differently, and, um, but we will do what we have to do within the limited resources of government, because a successful farming activity, if particularly in this time, and fishing activity is a success also for the country as a whole. An appeal was made for farmers and fishers to operate on a united front by way of farmers' organizations. We need to make sure that the, the farmers involved in chicken, poultry, the farmers involved in, 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 in pigs, in, in goats, in small ruminants, farmers involved in vegetables, the sour sap, all of them better organized and strengthened. And certainly we at the ministry would like to, to find ways. I know this is something that the senator Senator Sinclair has been echoing and speaking to for, for, for quite some time. It's, it's, it's a challenge we have, but I think if we do that, you see, it is, it is much better to, to, to get what you've done through strength and strength comes through uh, the, the, being together. Um, and, and that I think coming out of this meeting, um, you know, I think if we can have the, the farmers organization strengthen and, and you know, ultimately having a national farmers organization is something that would certainly give more voice to farmers and give more strength to farmers. And I've said that time and time again, but I think we had a great day. I think we've achieved a lot. I think there's a much more to happen. And I'm sure we'd be sitting together, the chief agricultural officer, Senator Sinclair, uh, our, our agriculturists, the permanent secretaries, all of us will sit to find ways to really build uh, build the capacity within the industry. The information from the virtual meeting will be used by the ministries to draft a policy that can guide the way forward for both the farming and fishing sectors. I'm trusting that out of this dialogue here, we could then start framing the, the, the agenda moving forward. It was a very good meeting. I was very impressed with the level of the meeting and the kind of contributions that were made. And it's all noted, we are gonna continue the conversation, both ourselves and including um, Senator. And all of you, we now have your email addresses, et cetera, and, and better connections. And I enjoyed the, 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 the meeting and the, the tone that it has taken. And the people are in the mood to work together and that is so very important. Presentations were made by Dr. Sean Charles, the Chief Medical Officer, on vaccination coverage and the need to focus on combative measures to deal with COVID-19. Permanent Secretary Mike Sylvester from the Ministry of Finance presented on the current stimulus package available for farmers and fishermen and the impact of COVID-19 on the economy, while Commissioner of Police Edwin Martin presented on plans by the Royal Grenada Police Force to support members of the two sectors. And that's the National Report. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson.